Hello, I'm Jay Kadasek, editor for Briefing.com. Today is Friday, May 8th. The major indices settled with solid gains on Friday as financial institutions rallied after the government released the results of its stress tests. Meanwhile, the number of job losses in April slowed, another indication that the pace of economic contraction is decelerating. Eight of the ten economic sectors posted a gain, with financials leading the way, surging 8.3 percent. The energy sector also had a strong showing, climbing 4.2 percent after crude prices rose to $58.47 per barrel. Shares of AT&T slid on reports that the company is near a deal to buy $2.5 billion in Alltel assets from Verizon. Uh, strength in financials came after the close Thursday when the government announced the findings of its much-anticipated stress tests on 19 major financial institutions. The government has instructed 10 financial institutions to raise more capital by June 8th. The total amount of capital raised totals $75 billion, with some of the bigger banks, including Bank of America at $33.9 billion and Wells Fargo at $13.7 billion. In other notable corporate news, shares of McDonald's rose 2.9% today after the fast food giant reported April same-store sales rose 6.9%, the 72nd consecutive monthly increase. In economic news, wholesale inventories dropped 1.6% in March after falling 1.7% in February. The decline was worse than the consensus estimate that called for a 1.0% decline. The major indices gave up some gains after the release, but the market managed to trend higher throughout the session, eventually climbing above pre-release levels. Separately, the key economic report this morning was the April employment report. The uh, decline in payrolls of 539,000 was better than the expected decline of 600,000, but still represents bad economic news. Several prior months were revised lower, and the unemployment rate jumped to 8.9% from 8.5% as expected. The stock market had a relatively muted response in pre-market trade compared to the typical response for this release. For the week, the S&P 500 rose 5.9 percent. I'm Jake Kadasek for Briefing.com. Thanks for listening.